children that Santa Claus is coming to town. But let me warn you about something. If Jesus Christ comes to this town anytime soon, you are in a lot of trouble. From everything that we have seen about preaching in Charlotte, North Carolina, if Jesus returns to this town anytime soon, you are in a lot of trouble. We've preached at everything from gay pride parades to pub crawls and sporting events and music concerts and even in front of several churches. And everywhere we go and everything we see out of this town is wickedness, lukewarmness, puke warmness, a bunch of hypocrites claiming to be Christians while they're violent, foul-mouthed, homo-approving, drunken sinners. Wicked town. Wicked town, and you better hope that Jesus Christ isn't coming to town anytime soon because the Bible tells us exactly how he's coming, and it's not as a little baby in a manger. We've got, uh, you know, Christmas coming up here, and Jesus is not coming back the second time as a little baby in a manger uh, in swaddling clothes. No, he's coming back not in swaddling clothes, but in a garment that is dipped in the blood of his enemies. Jesus Christ is coming back with a flaming sword. Jesus Christ is coming back with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? Folks, you need to wake up. God has given us this little opportunity where we don't have Hillary Clinton as our next president. God has given us this little window of time uh, to prepare ourselves. This little time where we're not controlled in this country by a bunch of wicked, abortion-loving liberals in government, we are in the eye of the hurricane. And this is the time you Christians need to be preparing yourself. We're in the eye of a hurricane here in America, and the worst side of the storm is about to come. And before the liberals shut down freedom of speech and shut down every godly thing in this nation, and they cram the homosexual agenda and the abortion agenda down your throat even more, and before they silence and sue and castigate every Christian in this nation, now we're in the eye of the hurricane. This is the time for Christians to cut out all this nonsense. Cut out all this nonsense of your frivolous entertainment and wasting all your time and money and passion on frivolous, meaningless nonsense. This is the time when you need to be studying your Bible, getting your doctrine right, memorizing Bible verses before they take your Bible away. You better start memorizing Bible verses before this wicked nation starts taking the Bibles away right after they take all your guns away. This wicked nation is about to go all crazy against God and you Christians better be using the calm of the storm to prepare yourself, to strengthen yourself, to get ready, to prepare your mind and your heart for what are you going to do? What are you going to do when, uh, when they tell you, when your boss asks you to uh, participate in some homosexual parade with your company? Are you going to go along to keep your job and get that next promotion? Or are you going to stand up for Christ and reject him? What happens, Christian, when your job is on the line 
because of godliness? What happens when your friendships are on the line because of your stance for Christ? What happens when you're threatened with losing your livelihood, your friendships, uh, everything, your, your reputation in the community because of the cause of Christ? This is not preparing yourself for the coming storm that is coming against the Christians. You're not prepared. This is why so many of you are going to end up taking the mark of the beast. A bunch of mindless drones. A bunch of mindless drones. So, just are uh, fascinated with meaningless entertainment. Mindless drones. Sheeps to the slaughter. Going into the slaughter instead of preparing yourself for the coming storm coming against Christians. And if you're not a Christian, you better get saved and get saved quick. Because the time is coming when this nation will be so anti-God and there will be so few true churches that you can even go to. I don't know if you gave me three months, uh, if I could find a good Bible-believing, Bible-obeying church in this entire city. I'm sure there are some out there, but they are hard to find. But all the homo-approving churches and the sin-approving churches and all the pastors who turn their back on sin and look away as you're committing adultery and uh, obsessed with pornography, all the pastors who just want your check in the collection plate and your rear end in the pew next Sunday, that's all most of the pastors want in this city. Your rear end in the pew and your check in the plate. So they're not going to call you out on your sin. Well, we don't care where you are next Sunday, and we don't care about your money. We're out here to tell you the goodness and the severity of God. The goodness of God, that yes, God is loving and kind, merciful, perfect and pure, but he is also a just judge. God is a just judge who will, turn, who will turn you away from his kingdom. He will say, depart from me. That's what you are. You people are on the broad road. Get a, pan, get a panning shot here. A broad road leading to destruction. That's what the broad road leading to destruction looks like. The broad road leading to destruction. To quote Jesus, Jesus Christ said, a broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many go that way, but narrow is the path, and difficult is the way that leads to everlasting life, and few there be that find it. There are few, there are few that will enter into God's kingdom. Are you on the broad road leading to destruction, or are you on the narrow path leading to everlasting life? This is it. Let today, December 11, 2016, be the day of salvation for you. Let today be the day of salvation where you knock it off with all the frivolous nonsense and frivolous entertainment and you quit spending more money, time, and passion on sports and music and movies than you do the cause of Christ. Get serious about your soul. The five of us are more serious about your soul than you are. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, our God is known by the judgment he executes. And his angels are going to bind the sinner's hand and foot and cast you into a lake of fire. Maybe you came from your greasy grace church this morning who told you you're fine in your sin and that you're all sinners and everybody sins every day and it's no problem. Well, let me tell you something. The Bible tells us what grace does. And grace does not give you a license for sin. The Bible says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we are to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. That, and the Bible says, The Lord knows those who are His. Let all those who name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That means if you claim to be a Christian, you better be living holy. Live obediently to Jesus Christ. Obey his commands. Follow him. Quit being a friend of the world. Be saved. Live holy and righteously. And be enter, and enter into his kingdom. Otherwise, 
boys, you will be on the broad road to destruction, and there will be no hope for you for all of eternity.